Hello everyone, this is Mr. Fung with a video on my practice routine. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you what I usually do in, in a normal practice session. And this practice session is actually going to be shortened because I have a conference coming up. But before we start, and I'm going to practice George there. There's George, the cello. Uh, I want to show you my plant. It's more like a tree. But I've had some students come into my home before and ask me, when they study privately with me, they say, Mr. Fung, why do you have so many plants? And how is it that these plants are so tall? I think that, oh, there goes the plug, the power cord. I believe that music allows the plants to grow a little bit more. And so that's why it's a very musical home in here if I practice every single day, and I do. And so the plants, they flourish under music, I believe. I don't think there's any scientific fact behind it. But this video will be around 10 minutes long, maybe 15 minutes long, because I have to leave here in a moment, and then I'll be coming back to finish my practice session. But just to show you my routine, I got my bow, my cello bow, need to rosin it, because I haven't rosined in about two days. So I'm going to do my quick, usually five swipes with my cello bow. I do have my music stand set up. It's right next to this camera. Here's my music. And today's goal, I have to check my bow direction, review some of my older scales, and I'm preparing to play for my nephews, America the Beautiful and Danny Boy, just to introduce them to a cello because they've never seen a cello yet. They're only one is 18 months and the other one's almost two. Well, no. One is eight months and the other one is almost two. So, let me make sure my strings sound okay. It's not fine. And even if your instrument doesn't sound in tune, don't worry about it. Bring it in to me next week or in the next class or tomorrow and I'll get it tuned. So what I usually do is I try to play through some of my scales and today I have C, D, E flat, E, F, and G three octave to review. Um, so here I go. <laughs> scale and I could say ah oh, that's all right I'm, I'm gonna move on but there was something in there and I don't know if you heard it take another closer look it's around this area when I'm coming down on the A string in the second octave take another listen <laughs> so great. So what I would normally do is I play my C scale and actually stop in the middle of things because it's okay to stop because I feel that I've kind of failed a little bit in that area and I want to make it successful so I'm going to recorrect it. Now, there's no point in actually playing the entire scale again because it's, uh, it's a lot of time to go through that. So what I might do is I'll start right at the top and work my way down where the issue is. Notice 
notice I slowed down right at that spot so I can really listen to everything I'm doing here. And it's okay to look at your instruments. Scales are the best time to learn the most about your own playing because we're not looking at music. We can check everything here. We can play this with our eyes closed because the notes are just in sequence one note at a time. So now that I've kind of worked out my C scale a little bit, felt a little bit of what I need to do, I needed to push down a little harder with my left hand fingers. I need to apply a little bit more pressure on my bow. I'm going to run the scale full round and hope for the best. If, if it's not going to come out great, then I do it again. so much because I was changing my bow patterns. I'm trying to slur eight in a bow. Uh, my shift coming up here was okay. I gotta remember it's all about my thumb going into this harmonic and nailing that note when I get there. So I'll still slur eight. Maybe I'll take it down a notch. It's okay to fail. You have to fail. You're going to have to pick out where your mistakes are because this is the opportunity you get to make all your mistakes. And you're in sort of the privacy of your own home, in your own practice room, in your own practice space, and there's nothing to be embarrassed about. I'm putting this out in the public. I know I'm not perfect, and so this is why we do this. Let me do that D again. I do want to go faster too because it's, it's fun going fast. watching my hand here but eventually like in most music playing that we do in rehearsal we're not going to have the opportunity to watch our hands all the time because we're focused on what the notes are so in this round I'm going to play my D scale without looking at my hand this and like watching to make sure I get down to first position so that's this that's an issue where all right now I'm gonna have to develop not looking and hit that note that D to E flat. 
rock before I'm not going to slur eight. Listening to the pitch relationships between the two. And then first, the high note is G. I'm actually with my open G's to make sure I'm playing, playing them in tune. And the lower note is a B, so I have to put my first finger down with that. too high on 
to shift, so I have to come down a little bit lower. Let me do it again. And I don't want to butcher America the Beautiful. <laughs> George is doing well, I like George. This is another slow piece. I don't think we need to play fast all the time. This is good because I get to listen a lot more to each of my tones. I'm listening very closely to how well I match the two pitches next to each other.
Thank you very much for watching. I do have to leave now what I would have worked on, what I would have liked to work on if I had just five or ten more minutes, would be some of these togetherness chords. You know, I want to strike each of these notes more in sync with each other. And perhaps over here I kind of ran out of bow really fast, so I need to bring myself closer to the bridge. Thank you very much for watching my very short practice routine. This is more of like the scale, uh, scale and playing for fun uh, practice session. I'll be back to practice some more later. Happy practicing, everyone.